नमस्कार न्यूज रूम लाइव को स्वागत करीमा आ कि समय पर जहाँ सूचना आसी पहुँचू कि अर्थमंत्री निर्मला सीतारमण करती एक सांबादिक सम्मेलनी हो पारे बोध हुए कि बड़धरणर घोषणा कारण जो भी भाव में देखते कोरोना माड़ चली पूर्व भी जी आम देखा सरकार स्वतंत्र पैकेज भी घोषणा कर गरीब मानी अनेक योजना आनेक स्कीम आनी लोक अन्न योजन सामिल कर आर्थिक सहायता भी मिली तेणु आज प्रेस मिट्रे कौन घोषणा करमंत्री निर्मला सीतारमण समस्त नजर रही पूरा देशर नजर रही संपर्क में आलोचना करने रही आम प्रतिनिधि गगन विश्वाल गगन टी अटक भी कितना देखो आसी अर्थमंत्री निर्मला सीतारमण अलरेडी प्रेस कन्फरेन्स आरंभ हो गए शुणा कौन हो घोषणा we are meeting uh, friends first of all good afternoon good evening we are meeting on matters which relate to the ministry of corporate affairs so i'm thankful that we have mos rao indrajit singh ji today with me and also secretary corporate affairs uh the matter that i'd like to draw your attention on is about the supreme court's order yesterday on the antariksh devas issue you are aware that uh, antariksh had approached the nclt asking for liquidation of uh, devas and that was sometime early 2021 in january of 2021 post which the final order of the nclt was issued in may 2021 which ordered a liquidation of the nc uh, of the devas which the devas went on an appeal to the nclat the nclat also gave its order in september of 2021 upholding the order issued by nclt that it should be indeed liquidated post that devas again went on an appeal to the supreme court and the supreme court after hearing both the sides gave its order yesterday upheld the nclt and nclat order for liquidating devas the supreme court has actually given a very comprehensive order and in fact i'd like to draw a few of their observations as a part of their uh, judgment but before that i want to just broadly mention to you what this is all about i'm sure many of you all who have been watching this whole process since 2005 when antariksh entered into an agreement with devas and that itself became a controversy during the upa government agreement was signed during upa in 2005 and post the agreement it took 6 full years for the upa themselves to cancel the order in 2011 and even when they cancelled it glimpses of what was completely wrong against national security that it was a fraud upon the people of india a fraud on the treasury of india and a fraud against the country was obvious several of you in the media have covered it then and it was therefore sometime in feb february 2011 that the upa government itself thought it fit to cancel this order cancel this agreement between devas and antariksh
there are several statements given in that context by the Congress ministers then. And not to forget that that year, just a couple of months before, the cancellation of this, a sitting minister was arrested in the UPA government. And that was also a big scandal. So the cancellation comes in the sequence of one scandal, minister gets arrested, the next scandal where the agreement between two private, uh, Antariksh which was part of the ISRO's own commercial wing with Devas which was a private entity and giving away for pittance a rare S-band spectrum which is only used largely by defense forces. So this kind of a selling of primary endowments, whether it is under the soil as mineral wealth or wavelengths or satellites or spectrum band and anything else, giving it away to the private parties and making a deal out of it marks the feature of the Congress governments and this today after nearly 10, 11 years of struggle, we have had Supreme Court come out with a comprehensive order. Just a proof of how repeatedly the Congress party, when in power, misuses its position. Allows blatant selling of resources of the government, resources of the people of India for pittance. The states, statements given then clearly tell you how brazen this attempt was. The cabinet didn't even know about such a brazen agreement whereby 90% of yet to be launched satellites were already agreed and given away to private pro pro parties. The GSLV-6 and GSLV-6A they are not even launched yet. The cabinet hadn't even approved it yet. But 90% of these two satellites utilization was already through an agreement given away to a private party. In 2011 in an interview to a television channel, the telecom minister then and this is Sri Kapil Sibal, said that the cabinet was not even aware of the details of Antariksh Deva's deal. ISRO is something which comes under the PMO. Dr. Manmohan Singh in February 24, 2011 says, there was no question of Prime Minister's office being asked to approve this deal. It never came to that level. Unquote. And it further says only the launch of two satellites came to the cabinet. It did come to the Space Mission Commission. But it, that is Deva's Antarix deal, was not mentioned even in the cabinet note that there was a specific commitment under this agreement. The Prime Minister clarifies. What did Devas offer? That itself shows how blatant this agreement was and that it was a fraud. Just listen, today we have the benefit of hindsight, 10 years later we know what are the kind of services which we are getting through telecom and what we may or may not get through the satellite, which is not in the reach of everybody. Devas offered a bouquet of services known as Devas services through a device called Devas device in a hybrid mode, 
of transmission which is a combination of satellite and terrestrial transmission and which is called devas technology but none of which existed when they signed the agreement nor existed when the agreements were cancelled and probably to an extent doesn't exist even today that's where the fraud begins and the cag which comes out with a report in 2012 says first of all these are not within the scope of the satcom which is satellite communication policy and approving of digital multimedia broadcasting or direct to home broadcasting all these services are the prerogative of the government of india and no any one particular commercial entity belonging to any department could give that away but antariksh gave it away did not tell the cabinet and it went on to till today becoming a big legal tussle of course the cbi since 2015 has got cases going on under the pca prevention of corruption act the ed has also come in with a in first information report in 2015 some assets were attached i'm just very quickly moving to the fact that internationally too there are now arbitral awards coming up just to highlight what this greed of the upa has done they may have cancelled the order in 2011 but government of india and the prime minister modi is fighting in every court to make sure that this fraud doesn't get away do you want to know the irony of how this has been handled by the government in 2011 when the whole thing was cancelled an arbitration set course meaning devas went with the icc saying cancellation was wrong they should be made good for it in july 2011 they were asked to appoint government antariksh was asked to appoint an arbitrator from its side devas would do it from their side arbitration will go on antariksh did not even appoint an arbitrator continuing this fraud government of india did not tell antariksh that he should appoint an arbitrator and go fight they did not they just kept off saying whatever happens let's see having cancelled it they did not appoint an arbitrator to fight for the right and defend the government of india did they leave it there in august 2011 again they were reminded appoint somebody for this arbitration and they were given 21 days only to appoint an arbitrator to fight for it so that the government of india doesn't have to pay for having cancelled and rightly cancelled it even the 21 days went away they did not appoint an arbitrator which means what couldn't be given through the deal through arbitration and everything else the fraud that was perpetrated on us would get paid in the name of damages that arbitration award had to come in 2015 after modi's government comes and we take it up all in seriousness and fight from then even worse even in 2011 for having given away the s band which is a very sensitive band which is a spectrum band which is very rarely used and by defense only for having given away the s band for a throw away price they did not even invoke national security when the arbitration began it's an outrageous case whereby 
a rare endowment of the people of India, the S-band spectrum, the satellite which goes up, are all given away to petty cronies of the Congress party. Some of them were abroad, some probably within this country. And half-hearted attempts to bring justice to this case were taken up. I told you how they did not appoint an arbitrator. Even after reminder, they did not invoke national security as an important clause. That led to Devas becoming brazen and going to all the international courts and claiming damages. I'll just give you a picture of how much of damages they are claiming. You'll understand the seriousness of this matter. The domestic commercial arbitration between Devas and Antariksh is of roughly 562.5 million US dollars plus interest plus interest from 2015. The two sets of the shareholders, the Deutsche Telekom, I think, Singapore, and three Mauritius investors, have obtained awards using the bilateral investment treaty clauses. Each, meaning one has got 93.3 million US dollars, and the other one, is 112 million US dollars. You can imagine what a scandalous agreement that was. A laid back, just get the problem out of my way kind of an approach in 2011 when they cancelled it. And even after that, when they did not appoint an arbitrator, and even after that, they did not even invoke national interest or national security, that till, till today we are fighting one after the other to save taxpayers money, which would have otherwise gone for paying all the damages because of this scandalous agreement. It was a fraud from the first place. And I'm glad that the Supreme Court has called it out. And simultaneously, let me remind you that the first generation bilateral investment treaties, which did not have very many clauses which are important for Indian investors, was brought to an end, terminated in 2015, after Prime Minister Modi came. It's become null and void since after 2016. A model B BIT is now being negotiated with very many countries. And just to highlight to you what that first uh, generation BIT did not have and as a result of which we are facing a lot of trouble is it had issues of taxation also being interpreted as part of being a part of BIT. Taxation can never be part of any of the agreements. It's a sovereign domain. Today interpretations are being given even about taxation in such matters. Second, there's no chapter on investor obligation in any of those first generation BITs. Investor has no ob obligation. He may fulfill an agreement or not, but he can claim all the rights. Whereas the model BIT today includes all that. And national security could never be invoked, probably under the way in which that was drafted. So BIT is happily being touted and interpreted against our own interest. And I'm very grateful that the Prime Minister in 2015 said, no, we'll have to redraft all these agreements. And 15, 2015, it was annulled, meaning effective 2016. Although, of course, the duration for which it had to run, it will run, the grandfathering will happen for those who have invested during those times. Sorry, friends, it's a bit uh, longish opening statement, but I just want to draw your attention to a few quotations from the Supreme Court's observation. I'll just highlight one or two, and I'm sure many of you all would be able to 
take it from the judgment itself. I'll share the copy of the judgment with you all. Para 12.A of the Supreme Court verdict. I have the copy with me. I can share the copies with you later. Para 12.8 says, a total amount of 579 rupees, Indian rupees, was brought in by Devas. But almost 85% of the said amount was siphoned out of India, partly towards establishment of a subsidiary in the USA, partly towards business support services, and partly towards litigation expenses. So you bring in an investment money, you take it away and fight all the arbitration outside with that money and call that as investment made in India. Fraud. A total, and I'm quoting from para 12.8, a total amount of 579 rupees, Indian rupees, crores, was brought in, but almost 85% of the said amount was siphoned out of India, partly towards establishment of a subsidiary in the US, partly towards business support services, and partly towards litigation expenses. Para 12.8 again. The manner in which a misleading note was put to the cabinet. This is the Supreme Court order. The manner in which a misleading note was put to the cabinet and the manner in which the minutes of the meeting of the TAG, the Technical Advisory Group, subcommittee, were manipulated, highlighted by the tribunal, also shows that the affairs of the company were conducted in a fraudulent manner. Another paragraph in page 127, that the officials, some of them, not all, that is my addition also, that the officials of the Department of Space and Antariksh were in collusion, and that it was a case of the fence eating the crop, fence eating the crop, and also allowing others to eat the crop. Samaiti Newsroom, Namaskar.